If you haven't seen my last video, Amazon is making a huge change to the Kindle store. In less than a week now, February 26th, 2025, you're no longer going to be able to use the download and transfer via USB button on the Amazon website for downloading Kindle books you've purchased. Now I made a whole video talking about this and how it impacts consumers as well as just the state of buying digital media online and not really being able to own it. But in the comments of that newest video, a lot of people expressed that they just didn't know how to download these books if they wanted to get their Kindle books off of the Amazon site and onto their computer before this deadline. Today's video is that, a short and sweet tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to do that and rescue your Kindle books before February 26th, 2025. If you don't know me, I'm Spencer, and today we are rescuing some Kindle books, so let's get started. So I have my computer here, and now we're gonna rescue those Amazon books. First thing you need to do is log into your Amazon account. Go to the top right corner once you've done that, and you'll see hello, your name, account, and lists. Go over there, drag your mouse over it, and you will see a drop-down menu appear. On the right side of that drop down menu, it'll say your account. There's a bunch of things listed here. If you go about halfway down, you're going to see content library. Click on content library. Once you get to that page, you're gonna see all of the content listed that you've ever got on Amazon listed by category. You wanna click on books. Now that you've gotten to this page, you're gonna see all of the books that you've ever purchased on Amazon. I have all of mine listed here. Now, if you go to the right side, it says deliver or remove from device, delete, or more actions. You're gonna click on more actions. What you're now going to see is download and transfer via USB. So I'm gonna click on that, and then it tells me here, starting February 26, 2025, the download and transfer via USB option will no longer be available. You can still send books to your Wi-Fi enabled devices by selecting deliver or remove from device option. This is important because if you don't have a Kindle device, you're no longer going to be able to download those files and put them on that device. But we'll come back to that. What you gotta do is if you own a Kindle device, this is the only way that you're going to be able to download this. If you just had a Kindle app and you were buying books to read on the app, I don't think this is even gonna work for you. I think you're already out of luck. You click on your device here, and then you click download. So now it says success and I see that my book has arrived in the downloads folder. Now I have downloaded books before so it asked me to choose what folder to download it to. I always just select downloads. I just download it to the downloads folder and then if I wanna move it to another folder later I just drag and drop it then. But I like to get it all in the downloads folder first and then I determine where it's gonna go later. So the thing you need to keep in mind as well is that certain books are going to have what is called DRM, which is digital rights management software built into the file. And that's gonna prevent you from using it on other devices anyway. Like 90 or 90 plus percent of books on Kindle, I believe are going to have DRM built in from the publisher. Once you download those files, you aren't gonna be able to move them over to your Kobo if they have DRM built in. If you wanna move them to another e-reader that isn't a Kindle, you're gonna to have to do a conversion, which is something I'm not gonna be talking talking about in this video. What you can do though, is if you've purchased any sort of book from an author who is an independent author, a smaller author, most of the time they're not gonna put DRM on their books. Many books that I actually buy from independent authors are only available through Amazon. That author has chosen not to sell their ebook anywhere else, not their website, not any other ebook provider, just through Amazon. So this is impacting me because in the future, if I wanna buy books from this author, then I'm not going to be able to access them at all unless they choose in the future to offer them on some other website. So downloading those DRM free books that I bought from smaller authors, that's the highest priority for me so I can get them on my Kobo and make sure that I get those books to me that I paid for before Amazon shuts it off and I'm not able to download them whatsoever because I don't have a Kindle anymore. So an example of this where I'm able to save a book and put it on my Kobo without having to do anything with conversion is this book here, Incoming Assets, and also the one above it, Wisdom from the Road, both of these books are written by authors, by small authors who only release their ebook on Amazon. And these books after February 26th, I wouldn't be able to get them again and I wouldn't be able to buy them elsewhere. So I'm really out of luck. I need to download these because they both don't come with DRM and I'm not gonna need to do any sort of conversion to put these on my new Kobo Clara device that I'm doing my reading on now. So what I do here is again, more action, come down to download and transfer via USB, select the device that you had set up, which was my Kindle at the time, and then hit download. And now it says success. Here it is in my downloads folder. 
So I should now be able to go to the software that I use called Caliber to manage my eBooks. That's where I have my eBook library basically because I don't have a home with Amazon anymore. When I load stuff from Amazon onto my Kobo, I do it through here. So I should now be able to go into Caliber, click on incoming assets, and the book pops up. Here, it's not full screen right now, but you get a sense, it's here. I can read it on my computer and I can download it and put it on my Kobo and I won't have a problem. Lastly, wrapping this up, I just wanna talk quickly about the idea of DRM and a little bit of a rant, I guess. I see a lot of people talking in the comments of this video that DRM is just a theft protection thing and that you know, you're only paying for a license when you're buying these books. You should just consider it a long-term rental. You should stop whining that your books are being taken away and just be happy that you got to enjoy them for the price you paid. This bothers me a little bit because DRM is meant for theft protection. If you haven't heard, DRM means digital rights management. It is basically a software that is built into the files that we download, be it movies, TV shows, or books, that prevents them from being freely copied and shared without people paying for them. This in theory makes sense and is intended to prevent piracy, but it's important to note that not all DRM is created equal. Kobo, for example, Amazon's main competitor uses a type of DRM made by Adobe. This DRM works like other DRM is intended to and prevents people from sharing around the file to people who didn't pay for it. But with the DRM that Kobo uses, the Adobe DRM, it works with other manufacturers. So if you decide you like the offerings over at Nook rather than Kobo and you decide to buy a Nook e-reader, you can transfer all of the books that you paid for from the Kobo store with this Adobe DRM over to your Nook e-reader because it supports that level of DRM as well. Hey guys, Editor Spencer here. So I was looking up this DRM thing while I was editing this video and I learned something that made me even more upset in this rant. Kobo has changed their DRM as well. So Kobo no longer really uses the Adobe DRM that I was mentioning in this video that is transferable. This was an older practice that they had where you were able to transfer your books between Kobo or Nook or another device that supported Adobe DRM. In the most recent years though, Kobo has also taken a similar move to Amazon and moved to their own proprietary DRM and created a walled garden of sorts. So with maybe like 70 to even 90%, I'm not sure, of the books that are in the Kobo store, they are not going to be transferable if you move them to another device. You're going to have to do some sort of DRM conversion, which once again, I'm not gonna advocate for in this video. Where Kobo does differ from Amazon though, is you still are able to download the books from the site and actually have locally stored books on your computer. You don't have to rely on just downloading them over Wi-Fi directly to the device like Amazon where they're trying to really keep their cards tight to their chest. But honestly, it does disappoint me a lot that all of these e-reader companies are using their own proprietary DRM and just making it that much harder for consumers to try other brands and share the books that they paid for between devices if they choose to switch. At the end of the day, if I purchased a book, a physical book, and I decided to move from one apartment to the next, I'd be able to take those books with me. Somebody's not going to prevent me from doing that. And I feel like it should be a similar thing with ebooks. If I buy an ebook, I have the right to have that book, not just specifically on that device, I'd like to think. But unfortunately, that seems to be the way things are going. Still, I do think Kobo is doing a better job than Amazon, so I recommend them if it's going to be one or the other, but I just wish that these companies would do better. I hope you found this video informative. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't seen the original one about me talking about exactly what Amazon's doing, I will link it above. Don't forget to download your books by February 26th, 2025, because this download feature is no longer going to be available after that date. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, guys.